Hey, what up? It's Tampa Brad, and I'm here to talk to you about book number 17 of my 20 books for 2020. And book number 17 is Levels of Energy by Frederick Dodson. And so now, before I dive into talking about this book, I wanna kind of preface it by saying that this is a little bit of uh, an esoteric book. It's not so much, <clears throat> uh, it's not so much actions and principles as it is defining a lens through which to view the world that is highly uncommon in my experience. Um, it's not a commonly understood concept and so what the book kind of gives a rundown on is uh, the way that different levels of energy play out in the world. And so what are levels of energy? Well, levels of energy essentially are different, uh, what they would call vibrational frequencies at which different things can resonate and at which different uh, entities or beings or ideas resonate inherently. So some things have an inherent vibration like uh, an idea or a historic figure, take like um, Hitler for example, would have a vibration of a certain level, whereas Abraham Lincoln would have a vibration of a different level, probably a, a higher level. And so what you see is, as with most scales, you start at zero and you go up on the levels of energy. But the way that the scale of levels of energy work is, uh, you start at zero, but if you go up one, it's, a, it's an exponential scale. So it's 10 to the power of whatever level of energy it is. So the level of 200 is 10 times less than the level of 201. So that's a very interesting way to think of it. It's a, it's a scale that goes like a hockey stick like that. So a move up by even one level of energy, the one distinct level, is actually a massive jump in the grand scheme of things. So what the author kind of lays out is, and by the way, this book actually goes perfectly hand in hand with another book that I'm gonna hit later on, which is Power Versus Force uh, by David R. Hawkins. So be sure to check that book and the video that comes out with it later that's on the list as well. But um, the author basically lays out two distinct categories in the book. And this is, uh, this is also hammered on in Power Versus Force, so I'd highly recommend that book as well. Uh, but in this one, the author defines the level of 200 as the critical threshold level at which um, you can then progress way higher. It's easier to access higher levels of energy from there. It's also the level at which if the world as a whole hits that fundamental level, according to the author, and again, this is a very esoteric book, so it's just what the author has to say, but I think there's some merit to considering it. Once the world as a whole, because everybody's you know vibrational level kind of averages out, once it hits 200, there's actually no going back for us. We reach a certain level, and at that point, we're all going to kind of be at a level to which we're not going to necessarily bring each other down. There probably won't be very much uh, external conflict after that, and most of the kind of negative things we've seen in the past of humankind will likely ha come to an end very quickly thereafter, if not right away. So. What is so special about the level of 200? Well, it is what's called the level of courage. And so what courage implies is at the level of courage, people are willing to be introspective. And so by being introspective, people are able to be honest with themselves and receive feedback in a way that is non-threatening and that they can actually let it land. So the real critical thing about being introspective is when we're considering what we feel and how, how we feel and how we're acting, what it then allows us to, and being honest about it, by the way, that's a very key point, is a level of 200 is real courage. And real courage is looking yourself in the eye in the mirror and saying, okay, how am I really acting? What real feedback do I need right now? And being able to recognize when someone's giving you real feedback that is actually valid to you and not getting all tied up in your ego, but really being able to look it straight in the face for what it is. So what that implies is a high degree of empathy. And so once the world and, and people in the world, and this is all revolves around people, of course, because people make up the world. But once people come to the level of courage, they can then have empathy for their fellow man, understand what the, another person is going through. And what tends to develop is the idea that everyone is just doing the best they have with what they've got. 
So let me say that again. People, at this level of understanding, you come to realize that people are just doing the best they can with what they've got. People are just making the most out of their resources. So even if someone is down, say, at a lower level of fear, shame, guilt, or apathy, and they're doing things like maybe uh, committing crimes or doing hard drugs, or really just setting themselves up for failure and, and living life in a way that uh, is basically squandering it, for lack of better terms, you learn at that level of 200, you know, it then implies the ability to, instead of judge that person, to actually understand them. And once you understand someone where they actually are at the level that they're at, because remember everybody doing the best they can with what they've got, once you understand that and you can see people and where they are, a lot of the judgment, a lot of the hate, a lot of the negativity tends to kind of just crumble away because it doesn't make sense to be negative. If someone is just doing the best they can with what they've got and they're doing something like say committing a crime, what it actually is is it's not that that person is a bad person per se. That's a very easy thing to say, right? They're a, they're a bad person. No, no, no. They're just at a certain level vibrationally because of probably the surroundings they were brought up in, uh, where they were raised, who raised them, what beliefs were imparted on them when they were a kid, what is the energy level of those beliefs, what level are those beliefs vibrating at, and you can calibrate all of this. But um, really the point is when you take all that into consideration and you have an actual scale to view people in a not, not a positive or negative way, just a straight numbers way, it allows you to see people, not as good or bad, but just as people that are on different levels. And it also lets you realize that people are just on their spiritual journey. They are on the path that they're supposed to be walking. So if that person is committing a crime or is doing hard drugs or something like that, obviously if they're doing something that's hurting someone, that needs to be dealt with by you know a legal system. But if they're doing something that's just hurting themselves, that is actually a path that from the point of, of view of a levels of energy point of view, that's a path that they need to go down. They need that to happen so that they can go up to another level. And so, you know, this would tie into um, something like the, the idea of karmic threads. You can look that up. Um, I know a lot of people who are into this kind of stuff get into karma and past lives and stuff like that. I haven't really gone down that, down that route too much. Um, it's kind of interesting, but I just find that this is very practical and I really have been able to see this since reading the book uh, it really has opened my eyes to, you know, what level am I vibrating at? And so what I found, and I'll, I'll kind of just interject some of my own personal experience to give some context here, is I found that although you can describe a person as vibrating or resonating at a certain energy level, I found that if I'm being completely honest about my own thoughts, I find that I go like this. And so the hope, or my hope anyways, is that as I'm going up and down and up and down and up and down, that eventually, you know, the peaks are getting higher and the troughs are getting higher. So I should be getting kind of like a wave upward, you know, up and to the right versus up and then down. So I don't want my, you know, peaks to be getting lower. I want them to be getting higher. So that said, if you read the book and you're like, oh, what energy level am I at? Where am I? Do not freak out, okay? At one, if you can even get through the book and actually let the idea land, you're probably above the critical level of 200. This, uh, this ties into a book that almost made the list but didn't quite, but I would still highly recommend it. It's called The Kabbalion, and it's a book by the three initiates. I don't know what that means, but that's the author, the three initiates. And The Kabbalion goes over what are, what's called hermetic principles. And so in The Kabbalion, it talks about um, how the lips of wisdom are sealed, but to those who would hear it. So if you're a person who's even able to take in the ideas in a book like Levels of Energy, uh, you're at a certain level already. Just, just take that into consideration that you're already at a level to where you could even let it land. That says a lot about a person. If you're at a level to which you can evaluate the ideas in this book and take them in, it implies that you're probably moving up there in those levels of energy. And so, Let's talk about what the upper levels mean real quick. Uh, so once you move past a level of 200, you get into things like um, love, uh, bliss, you get into peace, acceptance, stuff like that. And I'm doing these out of order. Maybe I can throw in a, uh, a levels of energy chart right here. Apollo, go ahead and chop that in. I'll send you an infographic. But what you'll see is 
uh, as you go up, it's not that it's that energy levels do not correlate with necessarily what you think of as powerful things, right? But in the book Power Versus Force by Frederick Dodds or uh, by David Hawkins, he actually lays out that as you go up the levels of energy, your ability to uh, use power increases and you're po you become more powerful as you move up the levels of energy. But that's very interesting. That say, for example, uh, the vibrational level of love would be greater than that of courage. You would think that somebody who is courageous, who's strong and is brave would be more powerful, right? No, no, no. What this understanding, this, this levels of energy and levels of vibration understanding implies about the world is that the people who accept what is the most and fight it the least and are able to appreciate the world for what it is are actually hold the keys to more power than a person who is constantly fighting or having pride or, or even being courageous. So let that sink in for a second. That's a very, very different paradigm or a very different lens through which to see the world than what human race has experienced up until this point. It's never been popular to say that someone who is totally at peace is more powerful. Somebody who sits and meditates is more powerful than someone who say is, uh, is proud and has a lot of pride. So for example, the, um, the energetic level of pride is what runs the United States Marine Corps, according to the author of this book. And frankly, I'm inclined to believe it. I could see that. I, being a former military person myself, I see the extent to which pride plays a huge role in getting people to enlist, getting people to volunteer for an all-volunteer army, getting people to stay committed, people going and you know, potentially killing other people. It's, uh, if it's pride driven, it's very easy to get people you know, motivated and hooked on that, 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 feel, that feeling of pride, it's almost a drug. And uh, so that pride is actually below the energetic level of 200. I believe pride calibrates at around 175. So although it's not necessarily a massively low vibration thing to be proud, it is still below the critical level of 200 where you transfer from low vibration and has a tendency to pull people down versus above 200, you go to high vibration and it tends to pull people up. So that, uh, that being understood, definitely get into this book, read it for yourself. Um, something that I would like to point out in as many of these videos as possible is that if you are just taking my word for this and you are not going and doing the research yourself, you're just saying, you know, I heard Brad talk about this book, Levels of Energy, and you know, now I know about high vibration. I know what it means to be a, a high vibration person and I'm above the level of 200 because I'm courageous. Do not just take what I say carte blanche because I have a video camera and I'm talking to it, okay? You need to go to the well for these things. The reason I'm making these videos is as a catalyst for you to take actual action, okay? This especially applies to you if you're A, one of my close friends, or B, one of my coaching clients. If you're interested in being coached by me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, send me an Instagram DM and follow me on Instagram. I'm at Tampa Brad, you can get in touch with me there. But what these are really about is getting you to take action, getting you to dive into these books. These books will change your life. They literally will change the way you see the world. And so I would so, so massively encourage you to really get into it, dig in. You know, sink your teeth into them, take some time, consider what they have to say. There's some weird shit in some of these books, but that's okay. The best stuff is like 50, 50, or even like 30, 70, or even 20, 80, you know, 20 normal stuff, 80% woo woo stuff. And that's okay, you know, we're on the cutting edge. We're trying to do the most that we can with our time here on earth. So we gotta go with the bleeding edge of technology and information and ideas are. This is one of those books. It's on the bleeding edge. So get on this book, read it, dive into it. Let me know what you thought. Again, hit me up on Instagram. I respond to all my DMs there and I only have like a thousand followers. So I'm gonna see your DM. Um, and then also subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you don't hit the bell, you're not gonna get notifications of when I'm dropping new videos because there's so much going on in your YouTube subscriber feed. You, I literally am going to be drowned out by the Jake Pauls and getting divorced and whatever else is going on. So subscribe, follow me on Instagram. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your attention. Peace.